distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, I'm going to be covering negative and positive predictive value. This is the fourth video in my biostat section. Specifically, I would suggest checking out the second one on 2x2 two two tables and the third one on sensitivity and specificity before you watch this video. You can see here that I give positive predictive value a high yield rating of 6. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a rating scale from 1 to 10, giving you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for step 1. And if you'd like to learn more about that, you can go to my website. The positive predictive value is just the percentage chance that a positive test result is a true positive. Put another way, it's the percentage chance that a patient with a positive result actually has the disease. So the formula for positive predictive value is true positives divided by true positive plus false positive. So you also need to know how to use positive predictive value and you do that when you're trying to determine how to proceed after a patient gets a positive result. You're trying to figure out what that positive result means to this specific patient. It's also important to know how positive predictive value changes in response to changes in prevalence because unlike sensitivity and specificity, the predictive values change with differences in prevalence. Positive predictive value increases with increases in prevalence and it decreases with decreases in prevalence. So it's just directly proportional. Negative predictive value is just the opposite. It's the percentage chance that a negative test result is a true negative or it's the percentage chance that a patient with a negative result actually is disease free. And the formula for that is true negative divided by true negative plus false positive. And you interpret the negative predictive value the same way as the positive predictive value. You use it to figure out what a negative test result means to the patient who got that negative test result. And negative predictive value is inversely proportional to prevalence. So it's the opposite of positive predictive value. So when prevalence goes up, negative predictive value goes down. We've covered a lot of formulas and people usually get pretty frustrated with that because it's easy to get them all confused. But I've got a couple mnemonics here that I hope will make it a little bit easier for you. I would also suggest making these formulas one of those things you cram right before the test, maybe even right before you walk in. And then as soon as you get in the test room, you could even just jot these down real quick if you wanted to on the little board they give you. One of the reasons keeping these formulas straight is so difficult is because they all sort of look the same. But you can also sort of use that to your advantage because it means you have to memorize less. This is sort of how I think about a generic setup for all four of these formulas. So I think about the top value or the numerator always being true. And the bottom left value is always going to match that top value. And then you just need to figure out the bottom right value, which is always going to be false. So you'll see here the two blue things always match each other. They're exactly the same. And then the green one is different. So you got these question marks to figure out. So for positive predictive value and negative predictive value, all three question marks are the same. And in sensitivity and specificity, the blue question marks would be the opposite of the green question mark. Keeping that general setup in mind, this is how I picture it in my head. I draw a two by two table with positive predictive value in the top left, sensitivity, top right, and so on. The so first thing I think of is positive predictive predictive value is all positives. That makes sense. It's got positive in the name, but that makes it pretty simple. True positive over true positive plus false positive. Alternatively, negative predictive value is all negatives. So all the values in the formula are negative. Then to remember which one is directly proportional to prevalence, I think the one with the highest number of P's in the formula, P for prevalence, P for positive predictive, is the one that's directly proportional. And once you have that, it's kind of easy to remember that negative predictive value is the opposite, so it's inversely proportional. And then finally, I just think, for whatever reason, it sticks in my head that sensitivity looks like positive predictive value as far as the formula, but you're just swapping out that bottom right value. That's how I think about that. You know, positive predictive value is just one little tweak to get to sensitivity, and from negative predictive value, it's one little tweak to get to specificity. 
that's always sort of stuck in my head so uh, hopefully that helps you out too that brings us to the end of this video please give me some feedback by commenting at the bottom of the page those of you that are familiar with my video series know that I currently only have videos that cover about a quarter of the total material on step one. Before I dedicate a bunch more money and time to finishing the project, I want to make sure you all actually find it useful. You could say stop on step one is currently in the proof of concept phase. So please let me know if you love it, hate it, or have suggestions for how to improve it.